In this video, we're going to discuss joint probability concepts. So if this is something you want to get right in the CFA level one exam, do keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question that I want us to have a go at, a recent study based on tax audit data found that. Finding number one, the probability of a small business owner making a mistake in their personal tax return is 27%. Finding two, the probability of a small business owner employing the services of an external tax advisor to prepare their personal tax return is 60%. And finding number three, the probability of a small business owner making a mistake in their personal tax return given that they employ the services of an external tax advisor is 15%. What is the probability of a company employing a tax advisor and making a mistake in their tax return and we've got three options that follow now we're asked uh, or the, sorry the uh, topic for this video is joint probability and the fact that we're going to discuss joint probabilities is also emphasized by the fact that in the question where is it right we're using the word and what is the probability of a company employing a tax advisor and making a mistake in their tax return? Uh, in a follow-on question, we'll be using uh, words like given, which will uh, lead us towards um, conditional probability. Now, when you are asked to solve a joint probability problem, you're asked essentially for the probability of two things happening at the same time. So this is the probability of A, and B happening together, and this is how we denote it in, um, in mathematics. Now, there's going to be different formulas depending on, uh, for the computation of this, depending on whether we're talking about dependent or independent events. So I'm going to do two arrows here. Let's start with the easier ones. Easier one for independent events. And these are ones where, um, you know, the two things don't have any bearing on each other. So for independent events, i.e. the occurrence of one doesn't impact the probability of the other one occurring, this is going to simplify very easily as the probability of A and B happening together is the probability of event A times the probability of event B, simply. For example, if I was to ask you what's the probability of, um, you know, when you flip a coin, what's the probability of getting heads twice in a row? Well, the, pro um, the fact that you got heads in one throw has no bearing on whether you will get uh, heads in the second uh, throw or in the second flip. So the probability of uh, something like heads twice in two flips of a coin would simply be uh, one over two, so half times half or one over four, a quarter. That's the true for independent events. However, when dealing with dependent events, and those are going to be the ones where, um, you know, whether one occurs or not will have an impact on the other one occurring. For dependent, not dependent, dependent events, we're going to have a very different formula. The probability of A and B happening is going to be the probability of A happening given B has occurred. This uh, vertical line, um, whether you want to say the relevant or express this uh, verbally, is given A, given B, times the probability of B. Or you could um, essentially rewrite, re re rewrite this as the probability of B given A times the probability of A. And in this specific question, we are indeed asked for a uh, joint probability, but in the case of dependent events. What is the probability of a company employing a tax advisor and making a mistake in their tax return? Why is this dependent? Because whether a company employs an external tax advisor or not is going to have an impact on the probability of it making a mistake in their tax return. Right, so how can we now use the data from the question to um, you know, fill in the formula over here. First of all, let's uh, assume uh, A is making a mistake in the tax return and B is uh, 
employing a tax advisor. So if I was to, you know, say this out, we would have the probability of a company making a mistake and employing a tax advisor is equal to the probability of a company making a mistake given that it has a tax advisor, an external one, times the probability of having a tax advisor. Well, let's try to populate this with numbers. Finding number two, the probability of a small business owner employing the services of an external tax advisor to prepare their uh, personal tax return, 60%. So I'm going to label this as uh, basically as B, the probability of B happening, the probability that a company has a tax advisor. And now I'm going to look for probability of A given B making a mistake given that you have a tax advisor. Well, this is expressed in finding number three over here. So this 15% from over here is the probability of a small business owner making a mistake given that they have an external tax advisor. Right, okay. So it's essentially just these two numbers multiplied by each other. Um, I take the 15% times the 60%, okay? And uh, what's this? Well, 15% times 60% is essentially 9%, isn't it? So the answer to this question seems to be answer C. Now, let me draw things out and perhaps make it a little bit more intuitive and illustrate things a little bit more. I'm going to draw a table in which we will record the different probabilities. Hopefully that will clarify everything as well, if, if it's not clear yet. In the columns, I'm going to say mistake, i.e. making a mistake, or no mistake, the alternative. And in the rows, I'm going to say advisor, as in a company has an advisor, and alternatively, no advisor, the alternative. Now, we are told that the probability of a small business owner making a mistake in their personal tax return is 27%, implying that the total probability which should be associated with events falling into this column, i.e. making a mistake, is equal to 27%. Implying, therefore, that the probability that a small business owner doesn't make a mistake in their personal tax return is 1 minus 27%. So, uh, you know, 73%. You either make a mistake or you don't. So the total here has to be 100% uh, when you consider these two states. It's either this or it's this. Now, we call this probability, the probability down here, unconditional probability, sometimes also referred to as marginal probability. So these are unconditional probabilities or marginal probabilities. Okay. But in the middle here we're going to have um, various joint probabilities because they come at the intersection of employing an advisor or not employing an advisor and making a mistake and not making a mistake. Now, actually, before I even populate this table with the relevant numbers, let me also say that over here, we can easily say what the probability of a company employing a tax advisor is, um, and that's from finding number two, that's 60%, right? 60% of all companies employ a tax advisor, so the probability of finding one which does is indeed 60%, and therefore the probability of finding a company which doesn't have an external tax advisor employed is going to be 40%, once again, providing a total of uh, 100%. And once again, what we've got here on the side is an example of an unconditional probability. Okay, good. Right. Now, for the items in the middle, and the items in the middle within the table are going to be the joint probabilities. So let me maybe draw an arrow, or a set of arrows actually, pointing to the contents of the actual cells in this table. What's the probability of 
having an advisor and making a mistake. Well, the way I solved it was I said, the probability of having an advisor in the first place is 60%, okay? But if you have an advisor, so given that a company has an advisor, the probability that it makes a mistake is 15%. That's coming from, um, from finding, number, uh, finding number three. So if you treat having an advisor as a condition, out of these all, all these companies, well, 15% of them will still make a mistake, leaving you with 9% of the overall population of all companies, okay? Because 15% of 60 is 9. And now you can easily see how we could actually fill in the rest of the table. If the total here is 60%, it means... 51% of all companies are those which have an advisor and have not, make a mis made, not made a mistake. Because 51% is what you would actually get if you multiplied 60%, that's all the companies that have an advisor, times the probability of not making a mistake given that you have an advisor, which is simply 1 minus 15%. 85% of 60 will give you um, 51%. Let me just check that on my calculator because I don't want to tell you something without confirming it first. Let me just find my calculator. Here it is. 0 0.85 times 0 0.6. Well, it's 0 0.51, so 51%. Out of the whole population of companies, 51% have an advisor and have not made a mistake. And in the same way, because this plus whatever we'll have here must give 27%. I can easy to, easily tell that the difference is 18%, and that's the probability of not having an advisor and making a mistake. And at the same time, not having an advisor and making no mistake produces an overall probability that we can either solve by saying, you know, I've got 51% here, the total needs to be 73% down here. So what would the difference be? It would be a difference of simply 22%. But that 22% is also what we need to fill uh, the gap when it comes to the row. No advisor here, 18 plus 22 gives 40%. So as you can see, various ways to solve this um, obviously, the easy one is just to follow the formula, which produces 9%, but there are other ways to do it more visually if you do obviously have the time in the exam, which you probably won't.